The difference is the base genetics that's underneath them. On a half-acre farm in Ramona, Jim Radke shows me the neat little rows of canola he oversees as part of his job at a San Diego biotech company called Cebus. I'm the vice president of product development at Cebus, which means I'm in charge of plants. The plants here are not for sale, they're for research. Cebus is developing this canola to withstand herbicides, making it easier for farmers to grow. They keep each strain under a fine mesh netting to prevent bees from cross-pollinating the different varieties. It needs to be harvested all at the same time. This could create problems at harvest if you had a mix. So you want to keep them pure and clean. Radke has to cut open the net to inspect the canola pods, which look kind of like pea pods, only skinnier. Exactly, so you have pods, and if you look inside the pod, you will see a number of seeds that are formed. They're pretty small right now, so it's difficult in, in showing that, but you can just see the small seeds that are formed in there, and you'll have, you know, 40 seeds or so inside each pod. Crush those seeds and you get canola oil. In U.S. grocery stores, nearly all the canola oil comes from plants that are transgenic. That means a gene from some other species, often a bacteria, has been inserted into the canola. Cebus alters canola DNA too, but they don't use foreign genes. They only tweak the genes already inside the plant. Radke says the Cebus approach isn't gene modification, it's gene editing. Really, it creates mutations not unlike those you're going to find in nature. Okay, if you looked through millions of canola plants, you would probably find the same changes that we are making. We just do it in a controlled way and a lot faster, of course. Farmers are already growing one strain of Cebus canola commercially. Radke hopes to bring more gene-edited crops to market. He thinks they'll meet a growing demand for non-GMO ingredients. We all understand GMO to be transgenic. That's the way it's been defined. And as such, we're not GMO. Customers walking into this Chipotle can't miss the signs bidding farewell to GMOs. The burrito chain recently said it's taking genetically modified ingredients off the menu. That decision appealed to many of the people grabbing lunch here. But when asked what a GMO is, different customers had very different answers. I define GMO, GMO as pretty much anything we actually eat because we have been eating essential GMOs as far as there has been agriculture. My definition of a gen GMO is a genetically modified organism which is implanted in the crops across America and used either to produce more quantity or better um, fruiting plants and vegetables. I'm really indifferent about it, so I'm, I'm not sure. If you're confused about the question of what a GMO actually is, you're not alone. Even Martin Crispiels, a UC San Diego expert on GMOs, says the answer depends on who you're asking. A GMO is what you want a GMO to be, I guess. Uh, there is actually no uh, universally accepted scientific definition of a GMO. Crispiels says regulators have one definition of GMO, while activists have another. The U.S. Department of Agriculture says Cebus canola doesn't have to be regulated as a GMO because they don't think it is one. Even in GMO-averse Europe, German food safety officials have classified Cebus canola as non-GMO. But an independent voluntary labeling organization called the Non-GMO Project says Cebus canola is ineligible for their stamp of approval. Jim Radke says whatever you call Cebus canola, it represents the next step in genetically engineered crops. If we have a technology that can actually be more precise, that can give us exactly what we want, why wouldn't we move that direction? An overwhelming majority of scientists say GMOs are safe to eat, and Radke agrees. Before coming to Cebus, he worked on transgenic crops himself. Even if transgenic food poses no threat to human health, Radke says it's getting shut out of a market Cebus is positioned to corner. There's still a lot of people that, right or wrong, say, well, we want non-GM products. And so we have a technology that will help deliver that. We're meeting a market need. David Wagner, KPBS News.